Hi, my name is Ardi Rupan and I am the man in the wild. And in today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to make homemade wine with this berry fruit that we locally call Jamun. I'm also going to teach you how to make a local homemade wine still. And I'll teach you some of the health benefits that is associated with this fruit called Jamun. Stay tuned for that. Please consider supporting our channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. The Jamun tree is not native to Trinidad. It was brought here from India many years ago by my ancestors for its medicinal purposes. It was planted around their huts and soon the birds and other animals discovered it. They loved it so much they transported the seed throughout the countryside. Today, the jamun plant could be found throughout the countryside, anywhere there is wetlands or mangroves, as the jamun plant loves to grow in moist soil. Birds frequently visit the jamun trees, especially while they're in season. The kiskidi is one of the many birds that do visit the jamun tree to have a meal. And it is through these birds, the plants get dispersed all over the countryside. The jamun berries turn from green to mauve and then black. The black berries represent the ripe berries, which is best for consumption. The jamun is also known by other names, such as java plum, black plum, or malabar plum. I will put the scientific name on the screen. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. It has a sour sweet flavor, similar to that of the pomerac, if you've ever tasted that fruit. But it's a lot more soft and juicy, like a cherry. The jamun fruit is known for its many health benefits. It is high in vitamin C and iron. It improves your hemoglobin count, which improves blood circulation and is very healthy for the heart. It can prevent heart problems such as heart attack and stroke. Jamun is also known to be good for the kidneys and to help in removing of kidney stones. Because the jamun helps increase your hemoglobin count, it helps the blood to increase the oxygen levels to different parts of the body, which leaves you feeling much more energized. Jamun is also recommended for diabetics and persons looking to lose weight as the berries carry a small amount of calories and a large amount of dietary fibers. Jamun also improves the digestive system while regulating your blood pressure and blood sugar levels. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. Because of our tropical climate, the jamon fruit produces twice a year. There is two seasons. The first season takes place during the months of March, April, May and June. The second season takes place during the months of September, October, November and December, which means the jamun produces fruit for most of the year. Berry picking is quite enjoyable. You can eat as many as you wish while you're picking. The definition for a berry is a single fruit that comes from a single flower. So pumpkin, watermelons and bananas are also considered berries. But a strawberry is not a berry. You do have to be careful. 
these berries stain everything including your hands so you have to be careful you don't stain your clothes it's why I use stainless steel containers when dealing with jamun berries it's also why I wear black clothes when I go berry picking today I will be making one five liter gallon of wine I have picked more than enough berries for what I am going to make so I'll be snacking on some of these on the drive home I usually use one handful of berries to one liter of wine. This road cuts through the mangrove swamp of the area that I live. The jamun trees appear to have been planted on both sides of the road, but it was not man who planted these trees. It was the birds that fed on the fruit and deposited the seeds all along the roadway, creating this beautiful array of trees. Now let's get ready to make some jamun wine. We have some jamun in a stainless steel bowl, a stainless steel pot, my trusty old swizzle stick, and some clean water in which I can rinse the berries. These berries was picked straight from nature, so there are no chemicals to wash off. We are simply washing off the dust because of the dry weather we have been experiencing for the past few days. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. Gently rinse the jamun berries as they are very ripe and can bruise very easily. Transfer the rinsed berries into the pot. Once all the berries have been rinsed and transferred into the pot, we are ready for the next step. Barely cover the jamun with some clean room temperature water. I will now use the swizzle stick to first crush the berries and then swizzle them into this liquid. After the jamun berries has been crushed and swizzled, we will now add approximately one and a half liter of hot water and allow this mixture to sit for about half an hour for the nutrients to be drawn out of the jamun berries. The area that I live in does not have any stores that sell wine making equipment, so I have to produce my own. I'm going to show you a simple method I use to create an airlock valve. An airlock valve is very important for winemaking. If you do not have an airlock valve, it is very easy for your wine to become contaminated and turn into vinegar instead of wine. The first item to make in my own equipment is this 5 liter gallon bottle. Next is this basic aquarium hose. It is about 18 inches or 46 centimeters long. I have cut one end of the hose at an angle. And my tools will be this ice pick and this block of wood. Next, remove the cap from the gallon bottle. 
and make a hole in the middle of it. The hole is to accommodate the aquarium hose. We do not want to make it too loose. It must be airtight. If you accidentally make a hole that is too large, you can gently pinch the projections on the inside of the hole, making the hole smaller to get that airtight fit. The angle N that I've cut in the hose makes it easier to fit into this airtight hole. The wine still is almost ready. It just needs one additional component. Be sure that the hose can touch the ground once you have attached the cork onto the gallon bottle. This is to ensure the final component works properly. The final component I will show you in a moment. Now let's start making that wine mixture. One of the main ingredients in making fruit wine is sugar. If you plan to make dry wine, use one pound of sugar. If you want to make a medium wine, use two pounds of sugar. I am using three pounds of sugar because I am making a sweet wine. I have found that natural brown cane sugar is the best sugar to use as it brings out the flavor in the wine. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe and even leave a comment. Three pounds of brown cane sugar ready to go. It has been about half of an hour since we had put the jamun in this hot water to draw. This is what it looks like now. Let's get our mixture ready. A stainless steel bowl to put the pulp from the fruit. Our five liter bottle with three pounds of brown sugar within. A bottle cap that does not contain a hole A funnel made from a recycled plastic bottle. A stainless steel strainer to filter out the pulp. And a stainless steel dipper to get the liquid out from the pot. Now let's use this dipper to pour the liquid into the 5 liter gallon. Be sure to filter it. This way you get an extraordinary clean wine at the end of the process. This is what the pulp looks like after you have removed the liquid. The pulp will go to my compost, but the seeds has additional health benefits. So I will be dehydrating them and turning them into a powder. Top up the mixture with clean room temperature water to the level I have here. This mixture creates a natural foam 
and you do not want to overfill the bottle to allow the foam to get into the hose. While the liquid is still warm, I will give it a little shake to dilute the sugar into the mixture. You do not have to do the step, but I prefer diluting the sugar into the mixture. The fermentation process of winemaking will still work whether you dilute the sugar or not. You can see some of the natural foam accumulating at the top, and there is still some sugar at the bottom. And now the final steps of the winemaking process. Dilute a pack of yeast into a couple tablespoons of warm water. A small bottle of clean water. This is to complete the airlock. Complete the process by adding the yeast into the mixture. You can use wine yeast, but I am using baker's yeast here as it is not as easy to find wine yeast where I live. Baker's yeast work just as good as wine yeast. Cap the bottle. Now place the other end of the hose into the smaller bottle with water. No air will be able to get into the mixture, but the pressure from the winemaking fermentation process will be able to breathe through this airlock. The yeast is a living organism. It will feed off the sugar in this mixture and produce alcohol as a result. This is called a fermentation. Keep in mind, for the fermentation process to work properly and produce alcohol, you must have this airlock in place and you must set your wine in a dark area. If you do not have the airlock or you leave the wine in a well-lit area, the process will produce vinegar instead of alcohol. Here we can see the pressure created by the fermentation process is pushing the air down the hose. And usually within 30 minutes of setting the wine, you will start to see bubbles coming up this airlock. It is now time to move the wine into a dark area where it will stay for at least one month. Once the fermentation process is completed and you see no more bubbles climbing through this airlock, then the wine is ready to be bottled. Please consider supporting our channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. This is what the finished product looks like.